The last thing that we have to talk about in the first section of chapter 5 is scientific notation. Scientific no notation is very beneficial when multiplying or dividing very, very large or very, very small numbers. You can do that very, very quickly and efficiently using scientific notation. One thing that I want you to write down in your notes right now is the process for moving the decimal back and forth. When you move the decimal to the left, your exponent is going to be positive. So if you move left, the exponent will be positive. And so then the exact opposite, if you move right, the exponent will be negative. If you move to the right, the decimal that is, the exponent will be negative. Let's explain that a little bit further using problems 1 through 5 on scientific notation. So for problem number 1, we're going to change it from standard notation, that's what this is, it's 6,380,000 to scientific notation. As you guys know, the decimal point is right here. So when we do that, we're going to make this into a power of 10 by using the scientific notation method. So we're going to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. When scientific notation takes place, there's going to be one digit to the left of the decimal point. Everything else is to the right side of the decimal point. So that's why my decimal point goes right here. With 6 being to the left, the 3, 8, and 4 zeros goes to the right. So if I were to write this in scientific notation, it would be 6.38, I don't have to write the rest of the zeros, times 10 raised to the, you moved it 6 times, and as I said on this slide right here, if I move to the left, my exponent is going to be positive. So I indeed did move to the left 6 times, so my exponent is going to be a positive 6. And in standard notation, 6,380,000 turns into our scientific notation of 6.38 multiplied by 10 to the 6th, or 6.38 times 10 to the 6th. Moving on to number 2, this is a very, very, very small number. It is a positive number, but it's just bigger than 0. As you can see, it's very, 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 very minute. So if that's the case, I'm going to turn it into scientific notation, which means I'm going to have one digit to the left of the decimal point, one non-zero digit to the left of the decimal point, I should be more specific, and everything else to the right of the decimal point. So my first non-zero digit is the number 4. So I'm going to have that digit be to the left of the decimal point. So if my decimal point is right here, I have to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places to get the 4 to the left of the decimal point. So my scientific notation answer, 4.7 times 10 raised to the, I moved it to the right. If you move it to the right, your exponent is a negative exponent. If that's the case, I moved it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the right, so I have 4.7 times 10 to the 5th, and not only the 5th, but the negative 5th, because I moved it to the right, making it negative. So as you can see, if your number is a very, very large number, in the uh, 6 million, I would say, is a relatively large number, I'm going to have a positive exponent. If my number in standard notation is a small number, which as you can see, this number is very, very small, I am going to have a negative exponent when I put it into scientific notation. So hopefully that will help you out for the next three of them. I have two numbers in scientific notation that I'm going to multiply by each other. So this is where it becomes so valuable with our product property. I have common bases right here. I have a base of 10 and a base of 10. What did we learn in the first lesson, the first video of this lesson? as far as multiplying with common bases. When we multiply with common bases, we can add their exponents, 5 plus 7. So this is where multiplying these very, very large numbers becomes so very, very efficient. We just multiply their coefficients, which is 4 times 2 to get 8. And then we have a common base of 10, so all we do is add their exponents of 5 plus 7. So it's 8 
times 10 raised to the 12th. 8 times 10 raised to the 12th is my answer for number 3. Number 4, why don't you guys try this one on your own. Pause the video, and after you pause the video and work, out through, the, work through the problem, start it again and see what the answer is that I get. So I have 2.8 multiplied by 3.9. I actually multiply the coefficients together, and when I multiply those two, I get the number 10.92. 10.92. And then we also know that we have a common base of 10 and a common base of 10. When I have common bases multiplying, I can add their exponents. A negative 2 plus 6 is a positive 4. So I have 10.92 times 10 raised to the fourth power. Now, I, it's possible that some of you have circled your answer right here and moved on to the next one. You would be incorrect. Everything you've done up to this point has been correct. However, this answer right here is not in scientific notation. Scientific notation states that there has to be one digit, one non-zero digit to the left of the decimal point. This one, there are two digits to the left of the decimal point. So this class is not our answer. We have to go on one more step. We have to move the decimal one more time. So my decimal is right here. So I'm going to move it to the left one more time. If I move it to the left, I'm going to add one more to my exponent of 4. I'm making it this bigger number. I'm making it smaller, so I have to add one more to my exponent, making 1.092. 1 1.092, sorry class. times 10 raised to the fifth power. And there is my final answer. Excel math might try to trick you sometimes by having one of their A, B, C, D answers as being this one. Don't be fooled by that. Always know that scientific notation, you have to have one and only one non-zero digit to the left of the decimal point. Everything else has to be to the right of the decimal point. All right, let's try one more before you get to your homework. Number five, six times 10 to the negative third divided by three times 10 to the first. When we have a division problem or a quotient, we're going to use the quotient property, saying that you can subtract their exponents to arrive at our answer. So we have six divided by three is the number two. Now we have 10 to the negative third divided by 10 to the first. Class, what I might recommend doing here is I might bring this to the numerator and now making it 10 to the positive fir to the negative first. The reason why I do that, I'll explain it as I come back, but as I continue to solve this, 10 to the negative third times 10 to the negative first with common bases, I would add their exponents to get times 10 raised to the negative fourth. Negative 3 plus 1 is a negative 4. And this is our answer. And you might think this is kind of contradictory because we have a negative exponent. In scientific notation, it's OK to have a negative exponent. On the problems earlier on the notes when we were multiplying and dividing monomials, it's not proper to have negative exponents. However, in scientific notation, it is proper to have negative exponents because that tells us how small of a number this is in standard notation. 2 times 10 raised to the negative fourth tells us that this number is very, very small. If the decimal point is right here, well, if it's to the negative fourth, it means it's a very, very small number. I have to move it 1, 2, 3, 4 digits to the left to arrive at my standard notation. So it would be point zero, 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 0.0002. In scientific notation, this is my correct answer. So the negative exponent tells us a lot in scientific notation whether the number is very, very large or whether the number is very, very small. So in conclusion, it is OK to have a negative exponent only, only, only in scientific notation. It is not proper to have it in any other way except for scientific notation. Let me know if you have any questions on that. 
Our assignment for this lesson is going to be objectives 29 through 35.